Well, hey guys, it's Dr. Drake 63 here again. Recently uh, acquired and did a review on this uh, this fine looking Taylor's Uberti smoke wagon in 357 Magnum. Liked it a lot. Wanted to wanted to get another another six shooter like this, and wasn't necessarily looking to get a perfectly matched pair, but I wanted to try out an offering. Very also from Uberti. This particular one imported by Steger USA, and that's the Uberti Cattleman. The Uberti Cattleman is basically the same gun that you're looking at right here. Difference is it retails for about 200 bucks less. It doesn't tout uh, a polished gunsmithed uh, trigger like the folks at Taylor do to these Uberti's. But as you're going to see, many of the components are the exact same. A little difference being here, the, the grip frame and the trigger guard is blued steel. And here, the grip frame and the trigger guard is brass. Outside of that, um, the big differences are going to be internals with some, uh, some retrofit springs. Um, and uh, some polishing uh, on the internals of the guns, as we said. Now, uh, looking now at the Uberti Cattleman 2, um, I'm not going to go through too much detail on this because this particular firearm, uh, like I said, looks and acts almost exactly like its cousin over there. They start out with uh, the same kind of frame, which is case-hardened steel. A blued steel barrel, this five and a half in 357 Magnum, as is that. Um, your cylinder, everything's the same. Uh, you just have a different grip here. It's a little bit thicker grip, uh, and it is solid walnut as opposed to checkered walnut that you see with the smoke wagon. So, some subtle differences. Um, so, no, not an exact matched pair, but that's okay. I really didn't want an exact matched pair. I know some guys are really into the whole concept of having sequential serial numbers coming off the line, everything else, which I guess is great unless uh, unless Guido over in Italy who makes these is having a bad day, and that's a different story. But uh, going to talk about differences in shooting these today. We're taking them to the range, and uh, hope that uh, hope that you all will enjoy watching me as I uh, fumble around with these uh, beautiful representations of the Old West. The Oberti Cattleman II. This one, just like the smoke wagon I have there, is in 357 Magnum. Stay tuned. This is DR Drake 63. Interestingly enough, um, upon watching some other videos about this particular firearm, um, when, when you get it, for whatever reason, this screw is loose and actually was, was, was coming out of the frame. And, uh, and, I, and I tightened it down, kind of, took it shooting, it loosened up again. So I've just uh, given this uh, a real He-Man type of tightening there. But I thought that was strange that not only in, in, in my particular case, but haven't seen this same model with a loose screw, this particular one for, uh, in particular, I thought that was kind of strange. And I'm like, okay, you know, all this attention to, to detail and quality and fit and everything else that you see here, uh, but we have to come with a screw loose. I almost wonder if that's a guy uh, at the factory in Italy just having some fun. Um, but anyway, just uh, buyer beware when you get this, tighten the screws. Who knows what, what that's all about. Um, I did not have that same situation with the smoke wagon. But uh, again, this one is handled and worked on and so forth by the good folks at Taylor's. Now, uh, just like the Taylor's, uh, says right on here, it's a Model 1873 and it's in 357 mag. Um, it does have the exact same stamp patent, uh, uh, for 1871 patent, July, 1872. Um, these were army revolvers. One difference is on the top where you see it says 
A. Steger, Maryland, and then A. Uberti, Italy. So this was important by imported by the Steger company. This particular uh, model was imported by Taylors and Company. So they're both they're both made at the same place. Taylors does uh, a little something extra to them with them in the smoke wagon, uh, smoke wagon deluxe. Uh, and like I said, I paid uh, somewhere in the neighborhood about six fifty, six sixty for that. Whereas this one was just about two hundred bucks less. I want to say four hundred and seventy. Um, and one of the things that uh, we can make a determination on today is whether or not you really need to spend that extra money. I think it depends on what you're using for. But let's listen to the what used to be for, but after after we put the the safety, the retractable firing pin in the hammer is now a three click. And there you go. And you want to compare that sound. I don't know how good you are at audibly telling the difference between that and something that's been tuned and worked on. Almost sounds the same to me, guys. The question is, is does it function differently? Is the trigger pull differently? And I can tell you right now, as we're going to see, there's not slop in this trigger either. This one hasn't been worked on. There's no slop. You push it, and it goes forward. It goes right forward. And that's the exact same as we saw here with the smoke wagon. I think the, the trigger on the smoke wagon is a little bit lighter, but certainly not a lot. So we're going to have some fun with these today. And uh, if you're a gun nerd like me, um, stay tuned. If you, uh, if you look at these guys, these are basically um, profiled exactly the same. I don't know if you can see, if you look at the smoke wagon on the left, just the slightest bit wider grip, especially at the bottom. Um, not a lot. I mean, we're, we're looking at, at the difference of uh, probably about a quarter inch in total between these two so a little bit thicker grip it's kind of funny because i have them up here and they're sitting next to a couple glock 19 iterations the glock 19x glock 19 generation 5 and it's kind of funny because these are these are the tactical self-defense pistols of their day from uh, from about the early 1870s up through the turn of the century um, these are what you these are what you had these are what you saw a lot of guys carry these as we've talked about five rounds in a six round chamber because they didn't want to carry uh, they didn't want to carry um, with the hammer closed on a full chamber for various reasons um, and then here you have these where this is this capacity wise is, is holding 18 with one in the one in the pipe this capacity wise is holding 16 with one in the pipe. So, you know, you've got, uh, you've got quite a, quite a bit of difference in terms of capacity, um, outside of the best, uh, and most talented gunfighters. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to just, you're not going to be able to shoot six shooters anywhere near as fast as you are something like a Glock, something like, uh, any of the other modern, uh, modern semi-automatic pistol. So um, there is that. But uh, just thought it was interesting stacking these up. 2018, 1873. Uh, I will give uh, ballistically. I will give. Uh, I will give the nod to the 357 Magnum over the nine millimeter, or the 45, whatever Glock you're carrying. But uh, I'll give that 357 a heads up, but uh, the problem is, is when it comes time to reload, not so fast. So today we're down at uh, the pistol range. This is an Almonds, A-H-L-M-A-N-S. Interesting little setup. You get to ring some steel. And um, what, what, a, what a nice little, little setup. It looks like that's about uh, 10 paces out. We're going to try out both the Cattleman, in addition to the Cattleman today, 
we're going to shoot it side by side with this Taylor smoke wagon. So as you can see, a lot of the same attributes on these firearms, but uh, we're going to we're going to find out just what the difference on that extra 200 bucks for that polish trigger and uh, those springs is. Maybe I'll be able to tell, maybe I won't. But uh, we're going to have some fun with these today. And uh, going to start out shooting some 38 Special. Again, I'm not using that John Wayne loading technique because, uh, like, like the smoke wagon, this Cattleman 2 has a retractable firing pin on the hammer. So, let's see what we can do here. First shots. So we'll load up some more. And these are 38 specials and uh, can honestly say, yeah, you can definitely feel the difference between this and uh, between this and the uh, the 357 Magnum. It's a lot uh, a lot easier shooting. I can see why in the world of the Cowboys uh, cowboy competitions why you wouldn't want to shoot 357 all day. There's no doubt about it. So let's see what that what that does. Again, I'm, I'm used to this two-handed stuff, and I'm just not going to shoot these pistols like that. I'm gonna compare the same ammo, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this using the smoke wagon. So real hard to tell unless you're looking right at it that we're we're looking at a different firearm. Just curious if it's sighted in the same thing again. We're using 38 special, and it seems that I need to aim um, a lot lower than what I think I need to. Let's see. If that's also the case with this one. I will say so far, one thing I am noticing is this, this trigger where when you're dry firing it, it doesn't seem as, as big a deal um, when you're dry firing it, uh, but it actually, um, it actually is noticeable. It is actually noticeable as a lighter trigger. So let's load up six more. But again, these 38 specials compared to shooting the Magnums out of this, is a, is, a, is a world of difference. And it's not like there's a, a ton of uh, recoil when you're, when you're dealing with the Magnum. Uh, but it is noticeable. I want to say it's less snappy.
So five out of six. So we got six or five out of six that time on these steel plates. Uh, this was using uh, this was using the um, the smoke wagon, okay. And uh, again, just to kind of point out um, what I'm seeing, uh, this is using 38 specials. Just so you're knocking me knocking those targets down with this particular ammo, okay. And prior to that. You saw me shooting these, which are reloads from uh, from the name of the place where I bought these, almonds. So those are 38 specials. Now we're gonna now we're gonna run some 357 through the cattleman just to see how that how that uh, responds. I expect a little bit bigger bang. You're gonna see that this is a little bit more authoritative type of scenario with 357 versus 38 special. You can see that uh, that definitely is a much more of a thump. Not hitting it. There we go. We're going to go ahead and load up a few more of these 357s. Then we'll shoot some more 38 special. Again, just just doing relative testing of accuracy on these guns. Now, I haven't really shot a lot offhand, left-handed. That ought to be a treat, but we're going to do that right now. We're going to go a little bit Yosemite Sam on this deal and uh, see how that does now. Probably this would be a better thing to do with 38 Special, but I'm not using 38 Special, so let's see how we do. I might be the most right-handed SOB on the planet. Uh, my ability to hit free-handed with this left hand says practice is needed. The other, uh, the other observation that, uh, that I'd like to make is that um, where I don't want to use two hands, using one, like I said, is going to be different. The other thing is you'd see guys in the Old West walking around with two of these, and you get the impression that, you know, trick shooting, hey, bam, 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 we take them all down. In reality, you only have five or six rounds in here, depending on how you'd load it. And we talked about that, uh, you know, with, uh, with the, what's called the so-called John Wayne load, where you'd leave a chamber empty so this hammer wouldn't be resting on an empty chamber. So you've got five, maybe six, six rounds in your pistol, and then you have to stop and reload. Uh, the best thing to do at that point isn't to switch to left-handed or fire simultaneously if you're trying to conserve ammo. The best thing to do is grab that other pistol. That's what makes the most sense. And I think that's why you'd see guys carrying two pistols uh, back in the day as opposed to, uh, you know, hey, we're going to do quick draw and, and shoot the hell out of stuff. Now, there's certainly guys that can do it. There's trick shot artists that can do it. There's no question about it. Chances are chances are they were more inclined to shoot this until it ran out of bullets and then shoot this and then reload. So whether you've got the, the holster where you're, you're holstered on both sides or how you carry it, the main thing is uh, back in the day, if you wanted 10 to 12 rounds before a reload, the only way you're going to do that is with two pistols. 
not so much. Here we go, guys. Not that that wouldn't be formidable at close range. I mean, I'm not not gonna not gonna uh, deny that. How do you like that? Are we getting better? No. Oh, that's better. You want to see two-handed twirl? Like I told you, I'm awfully right-handed. Pretty nice facility uh, for just having some fun shooting at steel plates down here. Uh, and this is in Morristown, Minnesota. Um, steel plates, like I said. And uh, so again, you know, our grouping, stuff like that. Don't know what they are with this fire firearm or these firearms, but uh, we're gonna find out. Well, the rain, rain is coming in, so that's gonna, that's gonna cut our shooting day a little bit short here, but uh, put a couple hundred rounds between these two pistols, combination of 38 Special and uh, 357 Magnum. And as I mentioned, I thought the 357 Magnum was a little bit more accurate than the 38 Special, at least the stuff that I shot. But uh, definitely you could, uh, you could tell the difference as, uh, as when we were looking at, uh, looking at those plates moving earlier, the difference between 38 Special and 357, everything from, uh, from the blast inside the shooting, the shooting booth uh, to the way that those plates moved. Uh, you definitely are talking about, a, uh, as we already knew, a, a much more robust round. So appreciate you joining me here today. I, I, uh, I, don't like to, uh, I don't like to jump to any giant conclusions as a guy who's not a cowboy shooter, who's not speed shooting. Uh, these pistols about whether or not that uh, extra 200 bucks or so for the Taylor smoke wagon versus the Uberti cattleman is worth it But uh, I'd certainly uh, I'd certainly uh, welcome your opinions if you have them uh, And uh, if you are a, uh, a real cowboy action shooter would love to hear from you This is DR Drake 63 saying thanks for joining me today and as always please support the NRA